Scripture, how will you know if someone is a genuine Christian? By their fruit! By their fruit, my dear friend! Are these professing Christians truly Christians? Also, stick around until the end to hear some concluding thoughts. God is real, and God lives inside of me and inside of all of us. And it doesn't matter where I am. I know that, and I feel it. Like right now, I'm hot. You know, I, it's a tingling. It's like, it's love. It's, I feel it when I look at my child. I feel it when I look at my husband. It's God. Beyonce believes God is real, and God lives inside of me. I'm hopeful that his struggles serve to open pathways for other young people to live more freely. LGBTQI rights are human rights. She has now cut a music video with her husband. Uh, it is not good. Okay, it's not good. Rolling Stone, so this, this, this song is called Ape Bleep, which is just great. Beyonce is firmly pro-LGBTQ and glorifies sexual promiscuity and profanity. So does God really live inside of her? What do you think? Several years ago, Kanye West was very public about converting to Christianity and wanting to devote his life to God. Do you feel yeah. born again, yeah. Kanye? Do you feel uh, like, yeah. would you consider yourself to be a Christian music artist now? I'm just a Christian everything. Uh-huh. Everything. everything. But the more that I'm in service to God, I just clear my head and just wake up more empty mm. every day and let, and let God do the, the driving and just use me as he may. Even from the beginning, however, there were several red flags, such as his unreserved endorsement of prosperity gospel Christian teachers such as Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes. There's a lot of people in the Christian community that try to give Joel a hard time because when you turn on the radio, he keeps on showing you how good God is. And then it'd be pastors that want to talk about Oh, T.D. Jake said this, he ain't say he wasn't pure to the Bible, but then they can't tell you a, a black pastor that they like, though. It's a divide in Christianity. As time progressed, Kanye began saying even more disturbing things, such as his endorsement of even Adolf Hitler. That's right, you're not Hitler, you're not a Nazi, you don't deserve to be called that and demonized. Well, I, I, see, I, I see good things about Hitler also. The Jew, I love everyone. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. And more recently, Kanye West has gone so far as to even say that he is God. Because I'm God. And anyone who disagree, I'm the God of me. And you can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. I'm the God of me. I don't know if I'm in heaven already. Is Kanye West proving that his supposed conversion to the Christian faith was actually a false conversion? What do you think? Here's what Nicki Minaj says about her faith in God. I think just like faith in God, and I always speak to people like that can encourage me. Like I'll, even now, I'll speak to like my pastor and be like, can you just pray with me? Because I need some sort of guidance right now. And I think that's what's always got me through. Like my mother kept me in church when I was younger. So I never really strayed far from that in terms of like my belief and my faith and my drive. But at the 2022 Video Music Awards, Minaj performed a song called Super Freaky Girl and ended the night saying this. Good night, everyone. Stay super freaky. Have great vagina. I love ya. Love you. So Minaj blatantly promotes and glorifies sexual immorality. Does Minaj have genuine faith in God? What do you think? Gavin Newsom unashamedly says that he is a practicing Catholic. I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a practicing Catholic. I got married in the church two plus years. Now listen to what Newsom says immediately afterwards about same-sex marriage. Uh, I don't see what we're doing in terms of advancing the bond of love and monogamy and extending that to families, families of same sex, in any way, shape, or form, takes away anything from the church or the sanctity of the union that my wife and I have. 
Now watch Newsom's response to what MacArthur says. I would just like to ask the mayor as a practic practicing Catholic, do you believe the Bible is the word of God? Yeah, look, Pastor, I'm not going to get in a theological debate with you. That no, would that's be not a theological debate. That's just a straight question. Do you believe the Bible is the authoritative Word of God? Yeah, I, I, with respect, I guess I do. Now the response. Well, then the Bible says when God created man, he said one man, yeah. one woman, cleave together for life. That's a family. Newsom says, I guess I believe the Bible is the Word of God, yet rejects what the Bible teaches about marriage. Also, Newsom unashamedly uses scripture to try to defend the practice of ending the lives of preborn babies. Gavin Newsom's not. He proudly put a Bible verse on an ad campaign saying, if they won't let you kill your babies there, come kill your babies here. Is Newsom really a man of faith? What do you think? Stephen Colbert is very open about his Catholic faith. But I will say this, I will say this. Uh, someone was asking me earlier about what I, this, is, this relates to faith because my faith is involved with, I'm, I'm a Christian and a Catholic. But Colbert wishes Americans still had the right to end the lives of preborn children. And America is still reeling from Monday's leaked Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. In case of no emergency, burn, baby, burn. Can a true man of faith support such an evil practice? What do you think? Justin and Haley Bieber are very open about their Christian faith. And so I really took a deep dive in my faith, to be honest. I just went deep into like, I believed in Jesus, but I never really like, you know, when it says following Jesus is actually turning away from sin. Mm. And so there's no, what, what it talks about in the Bible, it's like there's no obedience. There's no faith without obedience. So it's like I had faith about like, oh, I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, but I never really implemented it mm. into my life. I never like was like, I'm going to be obedient. To be honest, I really like what Justin said here, and I really hope he is truly saved. But there are several things that are very concerning. First, Justin has decided to sell marijuana. Today we are reviewing another celebrity strain of cannabis. This time it is Peaches by Justin Bieber. It's one thing to debate the legalization of marijuana. It's another thing to actually sell it for profit. And second, Justin's wife, Haley Bieber, who is also very open about her Christian faith, signed the Bands Off Our Bodies petition in opposition to the Roe v. Wade ruling. Can true Christians do these kinds of things? What do you think? Oprah says that she is a Christian. I, I am a Christian. That is my faith. I'm not asking you to be a Christian. If you want to be one, I can show you how. At the same time, Oprah is willing to go to hell because of her support for homosexuality. The God I serve, the God I serve doesn't care whether you're tall or short or whether you were born um, uh, black or Asian or gay. And to show, I take full responsibility for my going to hell or heaven. And Oprah denies that Jesus is the only path to salvation. One of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world, that there are millions of ways to be a then human being and, and many ways, no, but many paths right. to what you call God. Can a true Christian believe these things? What do you think? George Janko is an extremely popular YouTuber who is very open about his Christian faith. I really like George and a lot of what he has to say. He leaves you a journal of like, hey man, this is how I think you should kind of see me as. If you don't ever want to pick it up and read it, you don't want anything to do with it. So you say present yourself, he presented himself, you just choose not to uh, see it. No. George's boldness in talking about Christ and the Bible is extremely refreshing, especially from someone with such a large platform. At the same time, there's something that concerns me about what George teaches about the Christian God. So a lot of people don't want to turn to God. They're too scared. They don't think he exists. But I'm telling you, 
100 shots out of 100 every time I gave it to, to my Lord and I worked for it. It comes both ways. A lot of people read Bible verses and they read it and they just take it in a way that they don't grasp. And I don't mean to get biblical on you guys, but like read, read a passage in the Bible. Never once does Jesus just show up at your house to give you your blessing. Never. He waits for you to come to him. So what I'm saying is if you're out there and you believe in God or you believe in any type of higher power, I, I tend to go towards Christ. That's, that's my go-to. And my thing is, bro, don't give up. Work as hard as you can and throw it at his feet and see what can happen. And a lot of people here are going to disagree with me. I know that for a fact, but I'm telling you, you got to try. Unfortunately, this kind of sounds like the prosperity gospel. 100 shots out of every 100 every time I gave it to my Lord and I worked for it, it comes. And that if you come to God, God will give you your blessing. Also, George talks about any type of higher power, that Christ is his go-to, and that you got to try it. George seems to focus more on what people can get from believing in God rather than teaching the gospel of sin and salvation from God's wrath. I really hope George's faith is genuine and that he believes the true gospel. What do you think about all of this? In many ways, I really like what Chris Pratt has said about his faith in God. That kind of a message, it might not be for everybody, but there's a, there is a group of people for whom that message is designed, and I, and I it makes me, it, nothing fills my soul more than to think that maybe some kid watching that would would say, hey, I, I've been thinking about that, I've been thinking about praying. Let, let me let me try that out, you know. Number six, God is real. God loves you. God wants the best for you. Believe that. I do. I would not be here with the ease and grace I have in my heart without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the same time, when pressured concerning his view of homosexuality, Pratt chose to distance himself from his faith. Now Chris Pratt is coming out, he's saying, I'm not a religious person. And it's this, it's being reported in a lot of places, but it's a very long interview in Men's Health. And Chris says, look, I'm, I'm not really a religious person. I, I think religion has been oppressive AF for a long time. I don't know how I be, came to be viewed as this voice of religion. Still, despite his refusal to stand firm upon what the Bible clearly teaches, I do hope Pratt's Christian faith is genuine. What do you think? Matthew McConaughey is very open about his same time. McConaughey both refuses to state his position concerning any of the lives of preborn children and criticized a Texas law that would have made this evil practice more difficult. I'm not gonna come out and tell you right now on this show, here's where I stand on a but this latest move by Texas, it's a, it feels a little juvenile in its implementation to me. And it's also six weeks, six weeks. If you're saying that your discussion of a is even on the table to consider, six weeks does not really make that a uh, honest consideration. Can a Christian be against laws that would protect the lives of preborn children? What, what do, do you, you think? think? Popular Christian teachers like Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, and Benny Hinn are supposedly Christian, yet they fundamentally distort the gospel of sin and salvation through Jesus Christ alone. God accepts and approves you right where you are. Faults and all, mistakes, shortcomings, not when you overcome, but right now. He knows you're on a journey. He's changing you little by little. He accepts you. Now you have to accept yourself. He approves you, you have to approve yourself. I started giving on that level so that God would owe me. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, you can't handle that. And so he said, when you give, you get a receipt in heaven that when you have a need, you can then go with your receipt and say, you see God, I have got my receipt from my sewing, and now I have a need, and I'm cashing in my receipt. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. Can genuine Christians have such a distorted view of the gospel and still be saved? What do you think? Many argue that we cannot judge what's in a person's heart. So we should not doubt anyone's profession of faith. However, if someone is not bearing fruit in accordance with their profession of faith, 
the most loving thing we can do is to tell them about the danger that they are in rather than let them continue down the path of destruction. When Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged, he is reflecting on the leaders of Israel who rendered final judgment on people, who literally anathematized people, who thought they were the final court. That's what he's talking about. He's not saying you can't look at people's lives and make a determination because he says in the same breath, by their fruits, you shall know them. Listen to me. He says, depart from me, those of you who claim to be my disciples, who confessed me as Lord and Yet you live as though I never gave you a law to obey. I just described a great majority of North American Christianity. If anyone starts talking about law, if anyone starts talking about biblical principles on what we're supposed to do and not supposed to do, how we're to live and not supposed to live, everyone starts screaming legalists. Legalists. But Jesus said, depart from me, those of you who lived you called me Lord, but you lived as though I had never given a law. In American Christianity today, pass through the gate. Praise God. Live like the rest of the world, and it's okay. You're just carnal. Maybe one day you'll come back. Do you know what happens because of our bad evangelism? We have gazillions of children saved in vacation Bible school. When they hit 15 years old, they enter into the world and live like demons, a great majority of them. And then when they're around 30, they come back and rededicate their life. Maybe they just got saved. Because folks, it's more than just telling someone you're saved because you acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Satan acknowledges that Jesus is Lord. Is your life in a process of change? Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a deacon, a husband, a father, a software engineer, and an amateur maker of videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help me in my mission to spread biblical truth, just subscribe and watch these videos until the end, which will help the YouTube algorithm recommend these videos to more people. I'm committed to using the skills and gifts God has given me to glorify Him and communicate biblical truth, and I would be so grateful if you would come be a part of what I'm building. You can visit my website at joyfulexile.com to learn more about me and what I'm working on. I hope you're having a blessed day. I will see you in the next video, and remember, this world is not our home.